Hello everyone, no respawns here. I hope you're having a grand start to the week. Uh, so over the weekend, uh, we obviously had Bethesda game days. Uh, where they showcased loads of things, but notably Wastelanders. And we got a nice Q&A and a bit more info of exactly what to expect. I'm really good and excited. Um, I wasn't on any of the, the closed beta testing. Uh, I think it, to be honest, giving a YouTuber access to that would probably be a bit of a dumb thing. So they made a wise choice. However, it does mean that like a lot of you, I am just getting the information for the first time and what I want to do in this video is just kind of have a little bit of a giddy and excited ramble about the things I'm most keen and excited for because there's quite a bit they showed us um slightly annoying the fact is that um I'd been waiting for them to release because uh, they said they were going to release the gameplay footage without some of their commentary over the top so you could hear a bit of the dialogue um but I haven't seen that video crop up or anywhere I can download it so I'm going to be talking over the actual uh, um the actual games day footage uh, but let's just jump straight into that and the things that I am quite keen for right so the first part is the instances now I'm going to do these in chronological order as well so it'll be me just kind of commenting stuff as, as they kind of come up in the video but effectively the instances are kind of an old hat uh for MMOs especially uh so obviously uh, these are the same developer behind Elder Scrolls Online and so there's lots of cross over with the teams on the Xenomax side and um, instances are effectively just interior locations that are unique to your character so you can effectively have 20 30 40 50 people in the same room but you actually only see your version of it and you're almost always completely alone um, as you see right here it says team only interior so what that means is if you want to have someone join you you have to be in a group first um, I'm assuming it's the team leader is the one whose instance it is and and therefore then you can kind of see your version of the house. Um, a great example of this on, on houses front is in Elder Scrolls Online you have the players player homes. So for example I have, um, I play as a Breton mage and I've got my cool little house in Daggerfall. It's a nice little cottage but it's a house that anyone can own and mine will look very different than someone else's. Um, and it, it's quite fun. It, it's just a nice little feature. I'm, it's something that I expected them to do because obviously I play quite a lot of ESO anyway. So it's kind of an easy easy feature for them to put in. It also enables them to solve quite a lot of issues with pacing and kind of allowing you as the player to enjoy main quest elements without necessarily feeling like you're, you know, the, the experience is being slightly ruined by having 50 people around you. A great example of that in the, uh, the main main quest in um, Elder Scrolls Online works like this. So you have the zone quest, which um, there might be a few instance areas, uh, but the actual kind of overarching quest, more or less every major part of it is completely instanced. And so that way it enables you to feel like the hero and also feel like you're in a populated world because then you leave the instances and, you know, there's everyone else running around. It's a cool thing. Uh, there's also loads of potential there because, as I said, in ESO they have player homes. So a, a great example is we could have pre-built player homes. I'm thinking similar to Home Plate from uh, Fallout 4. Um, I would absolutely love an apartment uh, in one of the pre-existing areas, which I'm going to get onto a sec. And the idea that I can buy a home there, potentially decorate on the inside. So that way, if you... It would be nice kind of counter to the camps. So obviously you kind of feel a little bit more, more almost civilized and you have this claim. I would be very surprised if we don't get something like this. So that's it. This instance is, it's kind of one of those things that I expected to come. I'm happy it's here. And when they described it and me just kind of my own experiences with Elder Scrolls Online, I was like, oh, this is quite exciting. Right, so the second one is the kind of thing that I'm really hyped for is the actual new settlement. So as you saw right there, this one's called Foundation. Now this is the main settlement for uh, the Settler faction. Even though we haven't really seen it, we know that the Raider one is... I mean, we've seen pictures of it kind of it's in the trailer, but we haven't seen it in the same way that you're seeing right now. Um, but the Raider one is near the crashed satellite um, in the northern side of the map. This one is at Spruce Knob. Lol. Um, but one thing I'm really keen about this is, one, it looks really, really cool, um, but also, again, kind of merging back in to the point about instances, I would be very surprised if you don't have a player home in each one of these. Uh, one thing, and this is just me kind of conjecture, but I think it's possibly going to be just tied to the uh, reputation system. Uh, so I think there'll be player homes you can get that you can only get if you're at a certain level of rep. Um, or karma or whatever uh, with a certain faction. Also just looking at this, one thing I like the way they've gone with the design choice about this is this doesn't look, he's looking at now, it doesn't look like um, 
like a destroyed settlement that's been kind of repaired. It looks like something that's just been built from nothing, uh, which I really, really, really like that. So um, uh, one of those criticisms I always had of all of the old Fallout games, and even Fallout 4, was that everything was way too messy. It was like, you know, you'd go into, say, Bunker Hill or something like that, and as like, you know... You guys live like this? Does no one own a broom? I've seen you sweeping. And um, whereas if you look at this, this, you know, it's, it's been, it's ramshackle, but it's ramshackle in a kind of like, rather oh, there's bits, there's a few bits and pieces, but like it's ramshackle in a reasonably quite tidy way. You know, it's been some intent. It's not just like, you know, barricaded up ruins. It's actual something that's been built from the ground up with all of the available materials, which is quite cool. It's also quite large as well. I mean, if you look at it right now, it's it's kind of, it seems to me to be bigger than Diamond City, I think, which is pretty cool. Um, and also don't forget that this is um, one giant area. So it isn't like, for example, Diamond City, where it's kind of an instance area. Uh, this is going to be, uh, there is one where it might be a little bit of a lag fest. Um, but if, one thing I would be surprised, and it might even have been mentioned, I just haven't noticed it, but um, recently Elder Scrolls Online did um, kind of a new reinstall, and they basically condensed the game size down quite a lot, and it runs way faster, and I wouldn't be surprised if they'd be doing something like that for Fallout 76 as well, because uh, it, I mean, I wouldn't say it's something, I'm quote, easy to do, but it's something that they've done before, and I wouldn't be surprised. Right, so the next couple of bits they don't actually have footage for for what I'm going to be talking about. So I'm just going to show you this event that they show, um, which is actually incidentally quite cool. Um, this looks really, really fun, and the events do look a lot more dynamic. Um, I'm excited for the events, but I kind of, I guess, we knew we were going to get new events, you know, new stories. It's, it's, not, um, it's not a unique thing, I guess, you know, it's expected. Obviously, they, they seem to have probably gotten much better at making them. Um, I especially like the, the fact this one has a lot more dialogue and also cool new weapons as well, which is pretty grand. But I want to talk about more other stuff they mentioned but didn't show. Uh, so a big one for me is, well, two things. Well, first of all, I'll go for them all. Um, the allies sound awesome. Uh, so the idea being that um, uh, there are people who can actually accompany you, people can actually come to your camp, uh, the idea that you can do speech checks and actually get people to work with you. I'm um, effectively companions uh, from Fallout 4, which is pretty grand. I'm going to assume that they're immortal, if not on a cooldown timer. My guess would be if they get taken out, they just go unconscious and then get back up. It'll be one of those situations. But that's quite exciting. Um... I'm interested to see, like, how it works in terms of duplicates as well. I think they did mention somewhere that there'll be kind of unnamed ones. So you'll just have kind of your version of that particular companion. So it'll be like, you know, generic security guy, raider dude, that kind of thing. Um, but it will be quite grand to just see kind of how that works out. And the idea as well that you'll just have random settlers kind of wandering to your camp. Um, I quite like it's quite cool, um, so that's going to be quite cool. Um, beyond that as well, the Cult of the Mothman, and just generally the new factions are going to be quite grand. And the Cult of the Mothman is the thing I'm quite keen at, actually, because uh, it's a very creepy vibe, right? You know, obviously, if you've kind of seen the Mothman areas, uh, it's very, very unsettling. It's very the Blair Witch Project, which I just absolutely love. I love a good horror, as a lot of you know. And um, they haven't shown us very much, which is a shame. Obviously, the trailer does show us a bit, um, but... I'm really curious how far they take that, because they could potentially have some really creepy, um, very unsettling sections of the game. You know, I, I hope they kind of have it with a mix of instance areas and also kind of events like you see now. That could be quite fun. And also kind of broader down the line, maybe even actual seasonal holidays. The idea that maybe we can, you know, partake in worshipping the Mothman just seems absolutely grand and I'm all for it. Right, so another thing as well they're doing, and the two more things, is... Um, so there's a thing called... Um, I think it's called the One Tamriel. So they mentioned the One Wasteland, right? And it, it's quite a cool concept that... Basically, in Elder Scrolls Online, you can level anywhere that you want at any level. And effectively, they've sort of just done it by removing character levels. They're there, um, or like enemies' levels are there, but they kind of scale to you. Now, Fallout 76 sort of has that to an extent. But, you know, a level 1 player is still going to get absolutely murdered if they go straight down to Cranberry Bog. Um, the way they've done it now is you can basically just go wherever you like and, you know, just... And also, the way it scales with your friends, if you're questing together, it'll kind of balance out. It's one of those things that's it's kind of like, 
when you see it in practice, especially Elder Scrolls Online, you see how it works, and it works very, very well. Um, I always suspected that they would take loads of stuff they've learned from ESO to Fallout 76, and I'm really, really happy that's happening. Um, I'm really excited for potential play homes. Just back to that point again. Ooh, very, very cool. They've got an entire system in place already. It'd be very, very grand. Uh, so I'm quite excited by that, just from the sense of just, um, you know, y you and your friends can just go off and quest together. Um, I hope they do balance loot, so I hope me being with a friend will not, you know, make it so the loot balances evens out between us. I hope I get my own unique drops that are my level and they get theirs that are their level rather than, you know, them getting a higher level stuff or me getting lower level gear because that means that, you know, we can farm gear together, which is going to be quite grand. And now the big thing, obviously, they mentioned just at the end, uh, which is they are going to be focusing on building, and I'm really, really happy that building got this kind of attention. Uh, so I'm just basically quoting him. He says, bigger budgets and different ways for you to interact with the game. And obviously, bigger budgets is grand. I've mentioned before how, to us, all I want is really about half again extra would be good enough for me. I think with the building space you have available, just kind of adding another 50% on, obviously doubling it is all grand. Um, it really depends on the optimization of the end um, of the engine, so it doesn't make it lag. Um, obviously, in for example, Fallout 4, if you end up building way too much, the game lags like crazy. Obviously, it's a little bit less bad if you're on PC. However, um, obviously, it being an online game, uh, it's obviously a little bit more taxing on the system. You know, when you go into, you know, some of the bigger cities, it's going to be an absolute lag fest on Fallout 76 in the way that it wouldn't be on Fallout 4. And I mentioned different ways to interact with the game. So, like, I, my money is on the fact that you're going to get player homes um, sit in an almost identical way to ESO, but then there's also a chance for public workbenches, uh, maybe instanced areas of the game that aren't player homes, but maybe parts of the settlement that you yourself can build. Um, and I'm also just hoping that we get more building options as well in terms of more walls. I just need more stuff. I want more stuff. The slight criticism that Fallout 76 has had is it's, its base building set is quite limited and I do want more bits. Um, it's, it's good what they have, but we know that there's loads of stuff in Fallout 4 that they could chuck in. And I do hope they're not gonna... I know obviously they're going to reserve some stuff for the Atom Store, but I do hope they give us at least kind of double the amount of stuff again. Um, so that way, a load of new stuff to kind of get us into it and kind of give me four things to play with. I want just more like things like inanimate crates and kind of more structural stuff. Um, I kind of wish they'd emailed me and I'd have given some tips, but um, I don't think I'm that important again <laughs> as much. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's kind of like what I'm uh, excited for right now. Uh, it's going to be cool. I'm very, very hyped. Um... I'm actually sort of glad I didn't get in, because uh, obviously they didn't uh, give any, well, I don't think they did, uh, many, or if any, uh, YouTubers, any of the kind of the closed beta access um, they were doing a while back, mainly because obviously, you know, you, you, one leak and that's all gone. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm really excited because that means in a couple of weeks, um, a few, four weeks or five, um, I get to kind of jump straight in and everything's new again. And it's, you know, I just love when we get no Fallout stuff and especially this level of content is going to be absolutely grand. Anyway, hope you guys uh, just kind of, I guess, enjoyed my thoughts. Um, as I said, kind of my big thing for me is I do think we're going to see a lot more ESO style content and just all of those features in ESO that we've gotten used to. I mean, they even mentioned, uh, they've mentioned like uh, changing the perk system a little bit. And I like the idea that that might kind of eventually become similar to the champion points um, in ESO because that would be quite grand as well. There's just loads of little ESO bits that they could shove into Fallout 76 and it would be a net good for the game. Anyway, as always, follow me on Twitter at no response. I will have more videos up soon. Um, last month, I was streaming quite a lot, so it does look like I uploaded less videos. I didn't. I just streamed like three or four times. Uh, so you can see those videos if you want. Um, but this, I'm going to try and balance it more so I don't, you know, stream in place of making a video um, because it does make the content look a bit light for a month. Uh, also, I will be hitting a 100k subs in probably under a week, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I probably won't be to do, like, I was initially going to do a live stream on that, um, but it'll probably happen when I'm at work. So when it happens, I'll upload a video and get all excited. Um, so yeah, look out for the 100k and me ordering my plaque and having to wait like eight months until it arrives. Um, and then YouTube purges a load of subs and I'm actually under 100k for a while and it'll be hilarious. Anyway, I love you all and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.